Thank you for joining this launch of a major new campaign around the UN year for the elimination of child labor. My name is Owen, and I'm your invisible MC for today. How very 2021. Please welcome the first of our amazing set of speakers, the founder of history's largest ever mobilization against child labor, the tireless activist and Nobel laureate, Kailash Satyati. Kailash, the floor is yours. Carlos G, I, th I think there might be a problem with the, the connection line, so we're just going to check the sound. Is there a mute on the microphone uh, where you are? Sorry. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. Uh, please, please go again. Uh, thank you, Carlos G. My dear children of the world, dear brother Guy Ryder, dear brother Dr. Tedros, my dear friend and brother Angel Guria, Brother Martin, Sister Gabriela, and all those who are joining this historic movement. Only a few minutes ago, some of, her, some of us joined the launch of International Year for Elimination of Child Labor with Guy Ryder and Henriate. Now, we are launching history is one of the most important and the biggest ever campaign to change the fate of hundreds of millions of children in the world. This campaign, fair share to end child labor is going to rewrite the history. We have seen that the injustices, inequalities, miseries, denial of education, child labor, sexual exploitation of children, trafficking, and so many other problems have been exhibited during this pandemic. But these injustices were already there. And as I said a few minutes ago, in the year's launch, that the crux of the matter is that for centuries, for decades, for generations, we have been denying fair share for our children, fair share in health, fair share in education, fair share in protection, and fair share in all walks of life. Our children and young people are... And therefore, When the children, the young people, students and their organizations, teachers, workers and their organizations, businesses, faith leaders, Nobel laureates and parliamentarians, intergovernmental agencies have come together. Because when we call for fair share, we call for creating a new culture of justice and equality. We are calling for creating a new ethic of governance and state. Fair share for, fair share to end child labor is demanding very simple and clear things. 
fair share of resources. We have seen that in the budgetary allocations as well as in the ODA funding, children and particularly the marginalized children never got their fair share. We are demanding fair share in policies, means laws and their enforcement and the mechanisms to enforce the laws that has not done adequately. We are demanding a fair share of social protection. Safety nets are not. Normally left out and left behind. Calling for this campaign has several activities and actions over the next year, the whole year. Children are joining and survivors of child labor would be on the forefront of the campaign. Their purest and loudest moral voices would be heard in every possible place and every possible fora. We are closely working with the parliamentarians through IPU, Inter-Parliamentary Union. And that is going to lead efforts in galvanizing support of the parliament members, speakers of parliaments and presidents of parliament to organize special sessions where the voices of children should also be heard. The leading partners of the campaign, including teachers' organizations, teachers' unions, to Education International, and ITUC, the Global Confederation of uh, Workers. And they are going to help in mobilizing the political will, mass opinion, and building the mass movement together with the rest of the partners to make sure that this 2021 becomes a turning point in the history for elimination of child labor because we are all committed to end all forms of child labor by 2025 under the sustainable development goals businesses have joined us and many of them are sitting here and going to take a pledge that there should be fair share. And that means their commitment will help in influencing ethical business that no child labor is involved in supply chain. The faith leaders are going to bring their strong moral voices and they are going to influence the minds and hearts of people in favor of the most marginalized children to end child labor. So are the Nobel laureates. But dear friends, the strongest and loudest and the most passionate voices are coming from the students and young people across the world. And they are committed to take the lead. We are igniting a fire of change. And that is not going to stop here that fire will multiply. That fire will, will put the end to this age-old menace, this crime against humanity, the crime of child labor. We are not going to stop here. We will march on so that no child is left out, no child is left behind. We are marching until every child is free to be a child. Every child is safe and get education. Every child is given proper health care and every child is protected. We will do it. Thank you so much. And I welcome all those who have joined us today. I express my deepest gratitude and thanks for their unrelenting support moral support 
as well as the political support, social support so far. And today is a new beginning to end child labor. Let us celebrate it and let us pledge ourselves that these, these things are not simply commitment and pledges. We will not leave any stone unturned to end child labor. Thank you very much. And now, dear friends, I'm inviting uh, my two daughters, uh, Salimata. Salimata is from Ghana, and Abina is from Togo. You are going to listen to these survivors because they are going to lead the campaign in the whole year. Our children are ready. I'm asking the leaders of the world, are you ready for this change? Every child is change. You have to support and welcome that change. Thank you. Come Salima and Abina. My name is Salima Tajaj Salifi. I am very glad to be called upon to speak for this event and encourage and encourage um, my other colleagues out there that are going through child labor. But first of all, I want to thank International Labor Organization, the UN, the Fair Share, all the great speakers that spoke before me for the good job done. Um, I came from a community, fishing community, that is Pandotoko in the Volta region. When I was very young, um, I used to go to the riverside um, and buy fish to sell. And we used to struggle. I work alongside with boys every dawn to evening, and I don't know the danger involved in child labor. Over this while, I do this to feed my family out there. So I was doing this day in, day out. Not until Gao, that is General Agriculture Workers Union, came to my rescue. And they educate me on the negative of child labor. And if I want to achieve my dreams, I need to go back to school. And I have to be in school regularly and taking my work serious, but not going to the riverside. They made me know the dangers involved when I work alongside with boys. Maybe I might end up being dropped out of school, end up um, having teenage pregnancy, and which I'll not become somebody great in the future. And I'm a teacher by profession and I work with kids. And I want to appeal to my older people out there, children that are going through the same thing. I was once like them. I want to tell them that they shouldn't lose their hope. They should still have the hope that they will come out of it successfully, like the way I came out successfully by the grace of God and through the help of this organizations. I want to ensure them that they will not be on the street forever. They will not be at the riverside, the carriers on the streets, hawking day in, day out to put something on the table for their family. And I want to appeal to our parents out there, the international organizations, that they should keep the promises they made to us, like the way they rescue me, to rescue my colleagues out there. Um, since child labor is not a single person's business, it's my business, your business, our business. Let us all help to join the fair share campaign across the world, Ghana. Let us all help to join to fight and eliminate child labor this year. Child labor away! My name is Abina. I'm 21 years old and I didn't go to school. I had not benefited from my domestic work. I advise any child who wants to venture into this field without a contract. I call on government and civil society organizations to take protection measures for domestic children. What I regret is that I didn't go to school.
thank you very much to to Abena from Togo, who was speaking in a local language. She was a domestic child laborer, an issue that particularly affects girls and is so hidden that they're often not even included in the official child labor figures. Um, Abina and Selamata were trying to join the event live, but they filmed those two messages yesterday just to make sure their testimony could be heard if there was a problem connecting. Thank you to them both for speaking such truth to power. We now have a short film to introduce the Fair Share campaign. I think the um, the sound is is not working on that video. So what we're going to do is play that later, and we're going to move straight to our next speaker. And I'd like to introduce the Director General of the International Labour Organization, Guy Ryder, a true champion for equality. Mr. Ryder has taken on the lead responsibility for the UN year for the elimination of child labour, and his and ILO's strong leadership is already helping to establish child labour as a global priority across the UN system this year. Director General. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, my greetings to you, Kailash, and to everybody uh, participating in this very important event today. Let me let me say, Kailash, that I'm privileged to be able to be the first uh, to commit the full support of the International Labour Organization to the Fair Share uh, to End Child Labour campaign, an integral part, I think, of the global efforts in the international year for the elimination for, to eliminate uh, child labor which we just launched together only a matter of minutes ago you know kailash the global march uh, against child labor that you uh, launched some 25 years ago i think now has turned out to be a long march against child labor uh, but a, a successful march we have come a long way there are 100 million less child laborers today than there were at the beginning of this century, but there are still 152 million uh, left. And uh, as you've said to us, none of us are free until every last one of those children is free. And so the international year and the fair share campaign give us a chance to complete the march, which we have committed uh, to get to the uh, arrival point by 2025. I have to say, we've learned a great deal along the way, but. I think that by pointing to the need to invest a fair share of resources, a fair share of political priority through laws and regulations, a fair share of social protection in children, you are, I think, posing the question in a new and vitally important way. We know that the fight against child labor is complex. The causes of child labor are complex, and through this, fair share campaign, I am convinced uh, that we are doing something very important. Certainly, Kailash, uh, the campaign and the fair share idea chimes very, very well with what the International Labour Organization does. Why do I say that? Because allowing a fair share in the future uh, to everybody is part of the ILO uh, mandate for social justice. It goes to the heart of the matter. So we look forward in this year ahead uh, when we will be issuing uh, new estimates of the extent of child labor and indeed forced labor in the world, trying to unite the global community, governments, employers, workers, civil society, all stakeholders in a new push 
uh, to end what remains uh, the biggest abuse of human rights in the world today. That I think we can, even with the headwinds of COVID-19 against us, move forward in a new way, which will enable us to act on commitments we have already made. So as I say, the ILO is delighted to be an early and strong supporter of the Fair Share to End Child Labour campaign. And I thank you, Kailash, for your leadership and your inspiration. Thank you. Thank you very much, Director General. Um, the ILO have the lead role, but we need to see the other UN and multilateral agencies take action on child labour this year if we're to achieve our goals. So we are delighted to be joined by four other influential leaders of multilateral organisations. Um, we have Martin Chungong, the Secretary General of the Interparliamentarian Union, who's been a leading champion in recent years and is writing just this week to the speakers of all the parliaments in the world to ask them to hold a special session this year on child labour. Secretary General, uh, the floor is yours. Well, I think there might be a, a, do you want to check the, the mute? Sorry, Secretary General. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Please carry on. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. And dear Kailash, uh, very pleased to see you again. Um, uh, dear friends and Guy, I recognize your presence. Uh, great to see you. I hope we're all keeping well. And uh, I must say that I'm privileged and pleased to be joining all of you uh, this afternoon, Geneva time, uh, on the occasion of the launch of this Fair Share campaign. Kailash, uh, let me record my appreciation for your friendship, but more importantly, your leadership in uh, promoting uh, the welfare of uh, children worldwide. The launch of this campaign gives me the opportunity to reiterate the Interparliamentary Union's commitment and determination to work tirelessly for the elimination of child labor, one of our major priorities in the IPU. The mobilization this issue has generated shows that there is a need for concerted and holistic action to fight this scourge, which not only persists, but is worsening by the day in the current context of a dire crisis brought about by the COVID-19 pandemic. Nevertheless, we are convinced that if we combine forces, we can eradicate child labor. The year 2021, is dedicated to the elimination of child labor. It also brings us firmly closer to 2025, the deadline we have set to add all its forms. This impending and compelling deadline challenges us all to step up the game, to quicken the pace of our efforts. During this pivotal year, we are committed to pursuing and scaling up the initiatives we have taken over the past 10 years. These activities focus on targeted parliamentary action aimed at bringing about legislative reforms that would create an environment hostile to child labor, allocate sufficient resources for the implementation and monitoring of the implementation of relevant programs and policies. Since the impact of implemented measures must be assessed on the ground, we plan to organize parliamentary field visits, especially in regions, including West Africa. I had those two young girls uh, coming from the same region. Uh, and uh, I must say that West Africa is uh, uh, going to be an uh, area of focus for us. In these efforts, we are pleased and honored to count on you uh, Kailash and your foundation, the Satyaiti Foundation. We have agreed on what we need to do uh, to mobilize parliaments and as a witness to our collaboration, collaboration I'm pleased to announce, um, I think Owen mentioned it in, uh, in his introduction, that you, Kailash, and myself, on behalf of the IPU, have today sent out a letter to all parliamentary speakers in the world encouraging their parliaments to take significant steps to mark this year, including creating greater awareness among parliamentarians. 
The activities we have planned for this year will also be carried out in collaboration with the Inter International Labour Organization, with whom the IPU has a long-standing partnership, especially on this specific and critical issue. As part of these activities, we encourage parliamentarians to join Alliance 8.7, the global initiative to support the implementation of Target 8.7 of the Sustainable Development Goals. So I want to conclude by saying that we are looking forward to fruitful collaboration with you, Kailash, with you, Guy, and other people of like mind so that we can work towards achieving our collective goal of protecting our children and offering them a future that we can be proud of. Thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Secretary General. And then we will we'll try and play the short message for the campaign and we will hear from the other speakers shortly. मैं पहले अबरक चुनती डर लगता था कि कहीं माटी ना गिर जाए और मेरे और ब्लड भी निकलते थे बहुत सारे और बहुत सारी परेशानियां का सामना करना पड़ता था और मेरी मांग यह है कि सरकार द्वारा जो भी बजट आए चाहे वो पंतर पर उसमें कुछ कुछ हिस्सा हम बच्चों को भी दिया जाए यह हमारा अधिकार है और हमें हम बच्चों की मांग को सुना जाए और हमारी अधिकार दिया जाए Delighted to be able to, to introduce next uh, Gabriela Ramos, the Assistant Director General of UNESCO. Child labour and education are often talked by Kalashji as being two sides of the same coin. It's the same children who are missing in education uh, who are trapped in child labour. We're delighted to have you with us today, Ms. Ramos. Uh, over to you. Thank you so much, and, and the pleasure is mine. Uh, if Kailash calls on us, uh, we come. We come because he's a formidable force for the best cause of humanity, which is to take care of children. And, and UNESCO, and I do it on behalf of VG Azulay and, and all of the people that work in this amazing institution, we joined with our heart the Fair Share campaign. We know that in an ideal world, all the children will be in school, protected, nurtured, allowed to fulfill their own potential. All the children will be treated with respect and with dignity. That is the basic tenant of a society that we want to build. That's why we, we believe that joining forces with my dear friend Guy Ryder, with Angel Burria, with Kailash, and with all the champions that are going to speak today, we can create this, this room or this, this effort uh, to prioritize children when we talk about building back from the COVID crisis. Because let's recognize it, this ideal world in which all the children will be nurtured is not the world we are living in. And that's why we need champions and that's why we need campaigns like the Fair Share. And that's why we need to say that we need to prioritize the needs of children and those that are the most vulnerable and to end child slavery for once. COVID had, had made things worse. And we know that the world after COVID will be a difficult one. We know that we have lost millions of lives, 
but we have also lost the perspective and the hopes of many families. Violence against children has increased, poverty has increased, and in this context, the call that the Fair Share campaign is doing in terms of dedicating resources, in dedicating a priority, in developing the policies to ensure that all child can really fulfill their potential is so important. And that's why I'm very pleased to, to join the campaign and I'm very pleased to, to, to share with you that UNESCO, of course, we have a step up our action for children and we have a step up our action to ensure that the children that have been left out of school because of the pandemic are the priority to get back to school. But also that we look around and the children that you show in the video, the children that share their experiences with us, know that they can count on us. Kailash once shared with us that the dream for her lifetime was to end up child slavery. We join you in that dream and we join you in this campaign and we continue doing our utmost effort so that we fulfill our goals. Thank you so much. It's really an honor to be here with you. Thank you so much, Gabriella. And, and we're now gonna have a message from Dr. Trodros, the Director General of the World Health Organization. Mr. Kalyash Satyarthi, dear colleagues and friends, the social and economic crisis triggered by the COVID-19 pandemic will result in up to 66 million children falling into extreme poverty on top of the estimated 386 million children already in extreme poverty. The most disadvantaged children are the most affected with no access to social and legal protection, leaving them vulnerable to social exclusion and exploitation, including child labor. We cannot allow this to happen. We must ensure that these children and their families have their fair share of resources, laws, and social protection. This includes urgent action to ensure that they are protected from the catastrophic financial consequences of paying for health services out of their own pockets. The Movement for Universal Health Coverage provides an opportunity to ensure that all children and their families receive the health services they need without suffering financial hardship. But we must prioritize the health needs of those left furthest behind. As part of the International Year for the Elimination of Child Labor, I join you in committing to doing all we can to eradicate child labor and leave no child behind through a fair share in resources, policies, and social protection. I thank you. Well, thank you very much. And we're now going to move to the first of our um, signing ceremonies today. Um, so I would like to uh, invite, first of all, uh, the Director General of the, of the ILO, Guy Vida, to, to sign. Uh, Bina uh, wasn't able to, to unfortunately connect. She, she has been having some, some difficulties with the internet, but she signed this statement um, yesterday or, already. Um, and uh, she will be, um, uh, she wasn't able to write her name. She, she's not able to read or write. But uh, she's been the, the first signature, and I would like to, to welcome uh, Mr. Ryder to, to sign it next. Let us just call it up on screen, if you can wait one moment, uh, and then we will, we will do that. Over to you, Director General. <laughs> and then uh, Mr. Satyati. And, uh, and then Mr. Chungong. Now, I know that it's um, we're difficult, we can't all be together, but it's great to see people signing together this way. Secretary General Chungong. Uh, 
And then uh, Mr. Gurria has been held up, so he will sign it in, in a few moments. And, and Gabriella, please, would you like to add your name to? Thank you all so much uh, for, for joining. And this is just the first of the constituencies we're going to hear from today. Um, I'd just like to remind all of those people listening that if you want to send out messages on social media today, please use the hashtag uh, fair share to end child labor. But this brings to an end our, our opening session. Thanks. Thank you all for, for joining. And we're now going to move on to uh, the business commitments uh, section. And um, the next constituency, the business sector, the partners that have a key role to play of, of child labor. And we'll start, first of all, with two leaders from India. Rahul Bajaj, the chairman of the Bajaj Group and former president of the Confederation of Indian Industry, and A.J. Paramal, the chairman of the Paramal Group. Both are, are really titans of Indian industry, and we're delighted to have their support. Mr. Piramal, I think the connection has dropped, so we will... Uh... Oh, I'm here. Oh, you're here. Please, please, Mr. Piramal, over to you. Thank you for your patience. I know it's very late uh, in India at the moment. Uh, over to you. The mic is muted. Uh, we, we can hear you. Please, please carry on. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Mr. Satyarthi and all the distinguished ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a honor to be here today. I want to congratulate Kailashji for all the work that he's been doing for the last 25 years. And is something which we, are, we have as a group seen to it that there is no child labor amongst our own employees. And even we extended it to the supply. I operated over a organization called Pratham, which is the largest uh, NGO in India for teaching education to uh, young children. And there, I'm ready to say that a decade ago, we ran a campaign to free people, uh, child labor in the state of Maharashtra. There were many young children who were working in the uh, in really holes, working to try to make uh, saris, and we could rescue them, send them off to Bihar from where they came, and a new law was also instituted in the state of Maharashtra, which banned child labor. All this was because of the inspiration we got from uh, Mr. Satyarthi, who has dedicated his life. So our full support for the fair share to end child labor. It is criminal if we allow this to continue and we are all very much behind it. Thank you. Thank you very much. We now have a video message from uh, the play. today to request each of you to do your fair share for our children. I'm very happy to say that we at the Bajaj Group adhere to strict child protection policies And naturally, do not have any child labor in any Bajaj Group company. It is a very, it is a fairly large business which directly employs about sixty thousand persons. At the Bajaj Group, from the beginning, we have been true to our values. of ethical business. Hello. My
great grandfather Jabnalal ji was a close associate of Mahatma Gandhi and was considered his fifth son. Our commitment to ensure policies for child protection was strengthened. Once I met Sri Kailashji Satyarthi in November 2014, I was very impressed by his conviction for a child-friendly world. I'm very happy to mention that we have cemented our support to the Kailash Satyarthi Children's Foundation I'm afraid I think that the videos are just not playing well at, at the moment so I'm afraid we're going to have to um, finish uh, that, that those remarks there we will share it later on the, on the website and thank you very much to Mr. Bajaj for his support. Um, I'm now going to move on to, to three uh, live links you'll be pleased to hear um, where and we're delighted to have three more business leaders uh, with us today. We have Roberto Suarez, the Secretary General of the Institute of Employers who represent over 150 national employer organizations all around the world. Uh, Niha Shah, the president of the foremost software procurement and supply chain management company GEP and Naren Gupta, the director um, and co-founder of the major investment company Nexus Venture Partners and co-founder of the ISI software company. Um, I've not been keeping people to two minutes, but we will need to do that from here on in because uh, we're slightly behind. But Secretary General, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. I support that I can be heard properly and seen properly. If it's not the case, please tell me. So our commitment, first of all, thank you for inviting us to join this initiative. We are delighted, really delighted to join it because for us as business organization representing many business organizations around the world, this is a top priority. And we are we are we mean it. We mean it when we say it. Yes, now I have made the pledge related to the engagement of our business and employees organizations. And this campaign is very much about policies and the implementation of policies. Uh, with our friend Kaliash, we already started a process to engage further some of the key players on the ground, the business and independent employers organizations that can make a difference in these policies. Indeed, precisely the progress that we have seen is sounds to good success stories in terms of the policies, but we have to recognize it. These policies have failed on many areas. So what our commitment is, uh, to push and to engage in this campaign is, is to have these federations, at least on the Alliance 8.7 countries, and then we'll go further, to have them strongly engage on, on educational policies which will make a difference in terms of eradicating child labor, on informality policies, because we believe this is an area where no, not much progress has been made, to be very frank, which will also make a difference in terms of diminishing and um, uh, eradicating child labor, but also on social protection. If a focus needs to be put in terms of the sustainability approach for the future is precisely allocated resources on social protection networks on child labor and on families that need really that to build, uh, I mean, to, to have a kind of safety net uh, precisely to allow education for, for, for children. So these three areas of policy will be a priority for us and our commitment is to engage at least all the business organizations who are, who are, which are key players on the ground uh, to engage on these areas. Apart from that, of course, uh, on supply chains, we are going to push strongly on the due diligence approach within our company's network uh, on the focus with the focus on child labor too. So I, I just want to bring that to you and uh, we are delighted to commit and we are delighted to engage in this campaign. Thank you again for listening to me and for inviting us.
Thank you very much, Secretary General, and for also keeping to the, the, the two minutes. Um, now, uh, Neha, the floor is yours. Please go ahead, Neha. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I too am committed with our dear friend and inspiration, Kailash Ji, and the esteemed speakers today in this fight to ensure that all children around the world have their fair share of the opportunities that await them in a world free of child labor. My name is Neha Shah and my company GEP works with many of the world's largest organizations who run complex global supply chains and buy trillions of dollars of goods and services each year. Corporations, including our own, are innovating at a tremendous pace and providing solutions to customer problems every day. I believe companies have an economic responsibility and a moral obligation to eliminate all injustices that may exist directly or further down in their supply chains and end the scourge of child labor once and for all. To demonstrate ethical and sustainable business practices to their customers and their investors, to respect and protect human rights, and yes, in the words of Kailashji, to act with compassion. I positively encourage and urge all corporations and their most senior executives, including those who directly make supply chain and, and purchasing decisions, to educate themselves, to analyze and invest in all aspects of their supply chain and the global economy and ensure that every one of the 152 million child laborers are free to be children and have the same rights and liberties that my children have, that all of our children have. Our global community cannot and will not be at peace and no company can truly succeed in the long run unless we actively root out all forms of inequality, inequity, and injustice. Thank you for this opportunity to speak. Thank you, Kailash G and the entire KCSF team. Thank you. Thank you much, Neha. And uh, now uh, the, the floor is yours. Uh, we must invest in our future their future. Uh, setbacks of the last 12 months have made this mandate, I, I would call it calling urgent and very timely. I would say there is no better investment, no greater virtue, no better legacy than to take every child away from forced labor, really slavery, and provide her with basic dignity of a good school. A place where she can blossom blossom into a beautiful rose every child is meant to be. Let's join hands together to endow the next generation with millions of new flowers, millions of leaders who will help us create a society that we can barely imagine today that we can all be truly proud of. Every child saved uh, is an important step and every child not saved is a lost opportunity. We must not miss any opportunity. Together, we can hold hands and take a giant leap for mankind. Thank you very much, Laureate Satyarthi, for what you have done for all of us, not just for the, for the children you are saving. We are very grateful and we'll, we'll help you every way we can to further this campaign. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Gupta. So now we're going to do the, the next signing, and I'd like to invite uh, Roberto and, and now Nia to, to sign, please. I know uh, Mr. Peramal has already signed. Thank you, Nia. Thank you. And Secretary General. And then uh, 
just being added now for Mr. Gupta. So now, in, in, in the interest of time, thank you, thank you all very much. Um, we're going to go straight to the. Oh, there we go. Thank you very much, Mr. Gupta. Great to have all these signatures on, and the, and to see the business sector working together. Uh, we're shortly going to hear from the global unions, but I just need to to uh, go back to to the one speaker uh, that we, that we uh, didn't have from the opening session, and we're delighted to have uh, them join us today a long-time uh, champion of, of John's rights and has raised child labor at various international fora. Um, we're delighted to be joined uh, by uh, Angle Guerrier from the OECD. So, over to, over to you. Dear Kailash, my hero, dear friends, the COVID-19 pandemic has put in peril decades of progress on eradicating child labor by pushing many families into poverty. Uh, since the adoption of the ILO Convention on the Worst Forms of Child Labor in 1999, remarkable improvements have been realized. However, around one in 10 children are still deprived of a safe and protected childhood. This is intolerable. The world needs to keep fighting this scourge. We need to keep pushing for stronger measures to protect children. And we need reliable figures to commit all stakeholders to action. This is where the OECD plays a crucial role. In 2019, in collaboration with the ILO, the IOM and UNICEF, we provided the first global estimates of child labor and global supply chains. We revealed that a good part of child labor is hidden. For example, between 28% and 43% of the child labor is estimated to contribute to exports indirectly. What this shows is a reality that ending child labor requires a whole of supply chain approach. And we have established partnerships and communication with champions like uh, Kaila Satyarti, and we will keep working to combat this curse together. The OECD is fully committed to the three-pronged approach called for by the Fair Share Campaign to end child labor by ensuring that all children get their fair share of resources, policies, and protection, as well as to help governments design, develop, and deliver better child protection policies for better lives. We must act now and the only way is to act together. Thank you. Thank you so much, Secretary General. Uh, it's it's fantastic to have you with us, and I know you were you were touching from someone else. If you uh, have the ability to sign, you you're welcome to to sign now. If not, I know we will we will collect that uh, later. No, um, no you're no. ready to go. Great, please do. We would love to have your name added. That's wonderful. Wonderful to see the OECD together. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much again for, for joining. We're now going to move to the, the, the next constituency. Um, and really delighted to be welcoming the, the global unions uh, to this session. Um, the trade union movement have been staunch allies in the battle against child labor. And we're delighted to have as our next two speakers, the two most senior leaders in the trade union movement today. Sharon Bow, the General Secretary of the International Trade Union Congress, and David Edwards, the General Secretary of Education International. Sharon, over to you. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. And Kailash, thank you again for your incredible leadership. I thought all of the speakers have said just how, you know, proud and privileged we are to be both a friend and a fellow traveler 
of yours and all the other activists against this scourge that really is a, a terrible black mark on our humanity. We just uh, talked to the ILO launch event and we all said that in fact, this is a collective responsibility this year to get the job done. But I repeat, it is a matter of business responsibility. We need mandated due diligence so businesses will be, you know, absolutely forced to take responsibility for their supply chains. And we actually need political will. Governments could have ended child labour already. It's time. But we have a pledge. Not only do we uh, commit totally to the, uh, to the fair share, in order to do that, the trade unions are fighting for a new social contract, which means decent work, jobs, jobs and jobs, climate-friendly jobs for the parents. And it means rights. The ILO's centenary declaration, a, a floor of rights and protections for all workers, irrespective of the employment arrangements. And it means social protection. And this is where children come in. If parents have the capacity to depend on social protection, to look after their families, even at the basic level, while they look for employment, then this is the resilience against unemployment, against family shocks, against national and global shocks like COVID-19 has exposed. But when 75% of the world's people have little or no social protection, that's simply not acceptable. So that's our fight, universal social protection to put a floor of security under families so children are not forced to work for their very survival. And in that, we will fight this year. It's already on the agenda with support from governments and some employers for a social fund, a global social protection fund for the poorest of families in the poorest of nations. We must build universal social protection systems. Our states have the money to do it. We want to see the world help them. And of course, as David speaks, I'm a teacher from my uh, very early days of, uh, of my uh, adult working life. There's nothing more important than education. So universal social protection, universal public free education, that's our passion, but we are with you and we will end child labour together. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, David. Thank you very much, Kailash Ji, uh, for inviting us. Thank you, Sharon. You know, as Kailash has often reminded us, the scourge of child labour has never left us. But like many social ills, COVID-19 has made it worse. And school closures meant that children had no schools to attend. And in much of the world, there was limited access to distant learning, especially in poor and rural areas. Poverty, hardship worsened with really pretty little relief from governments directly or through international solidarity. Families have acted on the short term to, starve, to stave off starvation. And we know that that too often means putting children to work. Education International, the World Federation of Teachers, cooperates with its member organizations to uproot child labor, and we will commit to continue doing so. Because trained teachers who work with school administrations, parents, and communities can move children from workplaces to schools and keep them there. And as everyone who's spoken up till now has said, we are seeing serious setbacks. As teachers, we're seeing empty school benches. We're freed child workers used to sit. So Education International signs on to this initiative. We refer, reaffirm our commitment to ensure that every child is learning in school, as Sharon said, free quality public education rather than working to survive. And only a hasten mobilization against child labor can curb the reversal of the progress of recent decades. We're suffering from multiple global crises and as I said, the international response has been up to now far more impressive in words than in deeds. So it's past time to breathe new life into realizing the sustainable development goals, including goal four on education, because it's not gonna happen unless there's effective action to correct the serious and chronic global deficit of political will. 
Pledges by our leaders are not enough to make our world fairer and more prosperous. Profound change requires democracy and human rights so that workers and citizens have the power from below to make things right. Quality education helps to enable such a shift. And it will also build awareness of global issues and the interdependence through the practice of qualified teachers, the profession equipped with sound teaching materials. For children, education about child labor, its roots, and how to eliminate it is a powerful contribution to global citizen education at this very moment. Therefore, Education International pledges our commitment to make this happen. And we will support the Fair Share campaign to mobilize our members to ensure governments not only learn the lessons, but take all possible actions to eradicate child labor. Thank you, Kailash G. Thank you all for everything you do. Thank, thank you. Uh, inspiring words, uh, Sharon and David, and, and thank you both for your, your personal support and all your organizations have done in your proud history to champion the end of, of child labor. We'd now like to invite you to add your name on behalf of the, the Global Union's constituency. Thank you. Thank you both so much for joining us. And it's great to have your support for this campaign in, in the year ahead. When I move to the next constituency as quickly as possible, I, I, I know we're, we're running slightly over time, but the next constituency is civil society. And we're going to see civil society groups coordinating the campaign in every country. And in a minute, we'll hear from some of the um, national coordinators of the campaign. Um, but before that, I'd like to introduce Tim Ryan who's the, the current chairperson of the Global March Against Child Labor. 22 years ago, Global March organized a, a historic global mobilization that led to ILO Convention 182 against the worst forms of child labor. And it helped create the momentum even for this UN year for the elimination of, of, of child labor. Uh, Tim, we're delighted to have you with us. Over to you. Thanks very much, Owen. Can, can people hear me? Yes, please go ahead. I just want to make sure it can can focus. Uh, yes, we yes we can, Tim. Yes, we can. Thanks for checking. Okay, okay, okay very good. Uh, uh, LSG and and to the foundation, thank you very very much for for the, the uh, uh, for launching this event and launching this is very very to uh, to be a part of it and contribute to it. Uh, as as uh, was mentioned earlier, uh, as um, Guy Ryder mentioned, the Global March was formed over two decades ago for the purpose of adoption and ratification of the of ILO Convention 182 on the Work Forms of Child Labor. A remarkable, a remarkable achievement, the only universally ratified convention in ILO history. It's incredibly important, it's incredibly necessary but it's not sufficient and that's why we're here today. As a part of the commitment that the Global March made in 2017 at the Argentina Conference, Global Conference on Child Labor, we committed to work on several different levels uh, to be able to try to achieve the elimination of child labor by 2025. Uh, for example, maintaining the Global March's top to bottom and bottom to top advocacy efforts on local and national conditions, but also larger policy positions specifically and exactly something like the fair share for resources for workers, their families and children. So children are not forced into, into child labor and that children themselves get the resources that, that, they, that they need. We will work with Global March partners and civil society partners around the world to assist those countries who are committed to be pathfinder countries under the umbrella of the Alliance 8.7 uh, initiative to achieve their goal of eliminating child labor and advocacy on the fair share campaign there is incredibly important for each of those countries to be able to not only be part of the campaign but also to try to achieve the impacts of the campaign and then thinking about the kind of perilous state of the world that we find ourselves in these days not only with covid but also with a, a kind of a, an onslaught against democratic values the Global March is really committed to expand its holistic approach to address child labor in all its forms, including strengthening local communities, youth, girl child laborers to become leaders in fostering grassroots democracy to eliminate child labor, 
this is where those voices uh, from the ground have to be heard and have to make them make sure that that whole picture that child la the child laborers are facing on the ground is magnified and the fair share for children is a key component of any of that advocacy, both again at the national, international level, but also at the local level. So the Global March is very, very pleased to be a part of the fair share campaign. And we will adopt and adapt all of the uh, material and the work that the fair share is pushing for on all of these different levels within the advocacy efforts of the Global March itself going forward. So thank you very part of this campaign and we look forward to really making it a success. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Tim. And we'll now introduce the first of the two national coordinators that, that will be speaking, uh, Consuelo Contreras from Chile, a longtime champion on the issue of, of child labor. Consuelo, delighted to have you with us. Over to you. Thank you very much, Owen. I don't know if you see me. Uh, we can see you fine. Please go ahead. Thank you very much. Uh, Kaila Chuji and Sumeda, I know that you are there in some part of there. I will speak in, in Spanish because my language is my soul. And uh, uh, Ezequiel will help me with the translation. La pandemia dejó al descubierto y profundizó las desigualdades e inequidades de nuestros países. The pandemic has showed the world the inequalities and inequities that we have around the world. Miles de niños y niñas quedaron fuera del sistema educativo por la brecha digital. Thousands of children, not only of our country but the world, have been left behind because of the difference that we have in terms of uh, uh, technology uh, breaches. La precariedad laboral profundizó la pobreza. The precarity of uh, jobs has made poverty grown in our country. Y en materia de trabajo infantil se calcula un retroceso de 20 años. And in terms of child labor, we can foresee a, 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 a retrocess of about uh, 30 years. In the Año Internacional contra el Trabajo Infantil, in the year of a, in the international year of a, a child labor, debemos volver a movilizarnos con fuerza. We need to go back, back and we need to mobilize with much more experience. para alcanzar un avance sustantivo en la eliminación del trabajo infantil al 2025. To reach a sustainable goal to eliminate child labor. Uh, approachable until 2025, the year 2025. A 30 años de la aprobación de la Convención sobre Derechos del Niño. Among 30 years since the CLC. Y 20 años de la aprobación del Convenio 182. And 20 years of the approval of the uh, 182 uh, Convention. Volvemos a unirnos para exigir un sistema de protección social we come, we come and we join together to demand a protection, a protection system que eh, permita ejercer efectivamente los derechos económicos, sociales y culturales. That allows social, economic and cultural demands. Que permita, eh, exigi exigiremos una distribución justa. We demand a just uh, distribution. Y volveremos a movilizarnos. Uh, and we will mobilize again. To shout again, stop, stop, child labor. Thank you very much. Thank you, Consuelo. And then I'm delighted to introduce Andrew Tego from, from Ghana. Uh, Andrew, uh, please, please join the meeting. Um, I think, Andrews, can you hear us okay? I know the connection has been difficult. Andrews, uh, can you hear us okay? I 
I'm afraid we're going to have to come back to Andrew's then, I think. Unfortunately, the connection has been difficult all day uh, across West Africa. Um, we're now then going to move um, through to uh, the, the signing for the civil society constituency. And um, I'd like to invite colleagues to sign. There are some additional names here. We've had, we found it very difficult. Uh, there's been far more people who wanted to talk than, than we had space for. Um, so I'd like to also invite, as well as Consuelo and uh, Andrews and Cleofas, if, if they're connected with Tim and, uh, and others. Also, uh, Christina uh, Schauer from IFM SEI and, and Debs McCann from the Chief Executive of the Woodcraft Folk. We're delighted to have you with us at the start of this journey this year of um, championing the, the end of child labor. Thank you. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, adding these signatures and collecting far more over the coming weeks and um, be displaying that and working with that across the year to show just how broad the support is uh, for the campaign. Thank you, Christina, too. OK, well, Cleofas and Andrews, well, I'll add their, their names. I know Consuelo, we just heard from you, but I think there might be a, a bit of an issue with the signing. So we will move on because we're, we're slightly overrunning. Um, uh, but thank you all for, for joining. And I know the civil society and the national coalitions are going to be the, the heart of, of this campaign. Now, for the, the, the cause to, to succeed, the, on top of the leadership of those working in the most marginalized communities and civil society and, and those in business that can make the economic case, we need to decide that this is the moment where we draw a line and say enough is enough in the 21st century. And one of the strongest moral voices in our society community and they have a critical role to play in the, in the UN year for the elimination of child labor. So we're delighted to, to have the support of some different uh, faith leaders in, in this initiative already. And I'd like to start by welcoming uh, Bishop Alistair Redfern. Uh, welcome to the event, uh, uh, Bishop Redfern. Uh, over, over to you. Thank you for your invitation and thank you to Kailash for, for his inspirational leadership. This is two issues, really, fair shares. And of course, people of faith believe that everybody is equal in the sight of God and therefore deserves a fair share. And then children who are often not noticed and marginalized. And to people of faith, children are the future, the precious sign of life and its potential to be safeguarded and loved and blessed. Both of those are huge issues to bring them together fair shares for children is a massive aspiration but it's the right one and Kailash has shown in his story and his own life that change is possible and I'm proud with all those on this call and others to stand with him. As a person of faith I'm involved in the Kluwer Initiative and the Anglican Alliance which are church organizations fighting modern slavery and especially the exploitation of children around the world. And that involves people in every community, people who are leaders, people who are families, people who are vulnerable. So faith can speak into all those different contexts to bring people together for fair shares for children and to fight against this terrible exploitation. I also have the privilege of being part of the Global Sustainability Network, which brings together leaders from government, business, NGOs, faith and academia. And those five streams together create a synergy that can push back against modern slavery, which is our aim. And again, in this current year, we will have a particular focus with Kailash and others on this fight on behalf of children, the most vulnerable and the most viciously exploited. So it's a great privilege to be part of this event. And I hope that the faith organizations with which I work and many others can play a part in touching people's hearts because faith is about believing in the best that is possible for human lives together. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, uh, Bishop Redfern. And we um, are going to, to try and play some more videos. We weren't having so, so much luck uh, earlier, but we're going to try again now. Um, 
and uh, uh, I know we have uh, expressions of faith from, from uh, several. We say the children are the next generation. They are, but they are also the now generation. Children are the gift of God. The best way to honor the gift of God is to ensure that their memories of childhood are filled with joy, love, peace, safety and comfort. It is our responsibility to nurture and nourish the children of every caste, every color, every religion and every creed. Let us expand our sense of belongingness beyond our limited perception and embrace all children as our own. Let us take the disadvantaged children of our communities in our hands and give them a good, fair chance for beautiful life. Sometimes people say, oh, it is their karma to be poor. Yes, but it is our dharma, will karma to help them. Very important. Our foundation works to bring free education to as many children as possible and we commit in 2021 to work for even more children so that no child should be subject to slavery or oppression of any kind. I am so proud of our Kailash Satyarthiji. He has not only won the Nobel Prize Award, he has also won the hearts of all the children of the world and he is healing those hearts. May God bless him. God bless you all. Thank you being here. Thank you being together. And togetherness is the key. Thank you. Well, thank you so much uh, to, to Swami Chirandaji, uh, one of the most prominent Hindu leaders in the world. And um, it's fantastic to have uh, the support there and also from, from Bishop Edfern. Um, we are, we have had a, a very senior representative from the Muslim faith as well join, who, who may join in the coming minutes, but I'm going to, to move now just uh, uh, at least the Bishop Edfern to collect your signature and then we will uh, add the other colleagues uh, uh, when, when we can. So I'm just going to, to put that up on, on the screen uh, shortly and we will complete that. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Bishop We will we will add more, um, and uh, I understand that the Imam may be joining us shortly. But we will um, continue uh, uh, with the the program. And uh, what we're going to do, uh, because we're over time. Um, is we're just going to to quickly share. We're not going to the play the videos. We're going to quickly share um, the support that we have from the the Nobel um, laureates and leaders group, and it's fitting in some ways. We we already have uh, the signatures and support of, of so much of, of of that group because we have that um, so much of the idea of, of this campaign and the call for a fair share started uh, with with that um, community. And um, we have support from, and I'm just going to read, read the names out. Um, we move on to the youth section. But uh, along with, with Kalashji, we have uh, messages of support from, from President Ramos Horta, uh, a Nobel laureate. We have uh, messages of support from Prince Ali, uh, from, from Jordan, from the steering committee, from Kerry Kennedy, uh, Dr. Robert Kennedy, of K Human Rights, who is also a, a prominent supporter. And we're seeing, and we saw last year, an incredible uh, number of, of people get active within the laureates and leaders movement. Over a hundred different uh, laureates came out uh, calling for, for a fair share. And it's fantastic to see the support uh, that this campaign and this UN year that NCHAR Labour has uh, from that community. So um, and I'd like to issue a thanks to, to, to all of the, the, the laureates and leaders group. And now we're gonna move on to the, the, the youth uh, constituency and um, would like to introduce, first of all, um, uh, one of the, 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 the 
most important leaders, but also one of the, the strongest voices for, for action uh, uh, in the youth movement today, uh, Peter Koji from the All Africa Student Union, representing over 30 million students and young people uh, across Africa, but also uh, a trustee of the 100 million campaign that has been helping to unite uh, the different movements of young people around the world. Uh, Peter, we're delighted to have you with us. O over to you. Thank you very much. Um, excellencies, young people from all over the world, good afternoon, good evening. It is a huge honor to join today's event to make a commitment on behalf of young people. My name is Peter Kwisi Koji, Secretary General of the All Africa Students Union and a founding member of, and a founding trustee of the 100 million campaign. ASU is the largest student movement in Africa with over 71 member unions across the continent, representing tens of millions of students, both in Africa and in the diaspora. The COVID-19 pandemic has triggered a child's rights disaster in colossal proportions. In the last few months, we've seen a spike in child labor due to pressures to sustain livelihoods in the face of extreme poverty. It is a foregone conclusion that on this path we will lose an entire generation, not only to the pandemic, but due to the inaction of our leaders. Young people have always been the epicenter of historical actions for justice, and we will continue to be at the forefront of the fight for equality and human rights. Kailashi and his generation fought to give us the worst forms of child labor convention. This legacy should inspire us to take bolder actions on behalf of our vulnerable brothers and sisters today whose suffering has still not ended. We have seen what our power is capable of achieving in the Arab Spring and the Black, and the Black Lives Matter movement. Last year, we came together from all over the world under the coordination of the 100 million campaign to demand a fair share of the COVID-19 recovery funds to be allocated to those feathers left behind. Uniting thousands of young people across the world, we agreed not to stop fighting until we have won. And that's why this year, in support of the Fair Share to End Child Labour campaign, we are committing to use our, our convening power to mobilize our constituents to reach out to their members of parliament, to their senators, to their prime ministers, to their presidents, to allocate a fair share of the national resources to end child labour. I wish to take this opportunity to call on everyone, especially young people and students, to join this campaign in whatever small way. It is my firm belief that our little actions will trigger the greatest movement ever to stop child labor once and for all. We should not rest until every child is free, safe, and educated. Thank you. Thank you so much, Peter. And um, it's now a pleasure also to introduce Carmen Romero, a, a European student leader, but also who is representing the, the newly formed Global Student Forum the first global student representative body for over 60 years, who are making uh, Fair Share one of their first campaigns. Carmen, we're delighted to have you with us. Uh, please. Um, your Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen, expressing my gratitude for the invitation, the chance to participate in this event. Speaking on behalf of the Global Student Forum, the umbrella organization, of 180 and movements from 100, 118 countries. The cause here to launch today is fundamental to our constituency. There are 152 million children between 5 and 70 years of age who are victims of this social evil. Each and every one of us and humanity at large has a debt to those children, stripped of their right to education and a saved and dignified childhood. The Global Student Forum is composed of many regional student platforms across the world, which, despite their differences, have an apolitical agenda. If you wonder why or how students in Africa, South and North America, Europe and Asia have the same political aspirations, such as an equal and free access to education, the answer is simple. The current system is not working for a substantial part of society. It is perpetuating and reproducing the inequalities that so many children suffer from on an everyday basis. These children and young people should be fulfilling the right to a quality education and be in the schools and universities our member unions represent. But instead, they're working to create the clothes we wear 
the food we eat and the mine the minerals in our electronics that allows us all to communicate here today for a little or no pay. If we want a better world, we need to be bold and vocal. We do not demand charity, we demand justice. The first share campaign shall be the beginning of a process in which we, together, challenge the ongoing status quo and detect it. As our colleagues in Latin America say, in this world, it is necessary to defend our happiness by organizing our anger. The international students community will do its best to support this campaign to finally put an end to child labor every step of the way. And we applaud the continuous effort of the 100 million network in its conquest to eradicate this historical injustice. An injustice that is a powerful example of how deeply unequal and unfair our world is today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Carmen. And before we, we move to, to our next speakers, I'd like to invite you both to sign. Uh, well, as we, we try that, I'm not sure, there we go. Thank you, Cohen. Thank you, Peter. And we also have a, a, a much larger number of, of youth organizations and, and, and people joining us. Manon, I'd like to invite you to, to sign now as well. We have uh, Ewa Williams uh, from Liberia, Maria Chanchai from, from Peru, um, colleagues from, from, from Nigeria as well, uh, Blessing. And Johnson, we are um, seeing uh, a lot of the national campaigns on the Fair Share campaign are being led directly by um, young leaders, not just the, the work in the student and youth community, but the whole uh, campaign as a whole. And it's really appropriate for us to be uh, seeing this, this closing area with the messages from, from young people. Thank you, man. And thank you. Thank you, Maria. Now, um, Yuel and Eric, please, please add to. Um, we are going to, um, before we, we move to the, the, the closing call to action, the third of our young speakers, who is going to have the, the last word. Before we do that, we are just going to, to try and um, play uh, one of the messages that we were missing earlier. We really want to, to represent the, the Nobel Laureate's uh, constituency, which has been so crucial to this, this huge initiative and so united behind its call for a fair share to, to end child labor. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be. This is Jose Ramos Alta speaking from Dili, Timor-Leste. In the last 20 years, the annual wealth of the world has increased by $30 trillion. $30 trillion in the last 20 years. Yet one in 10 children alive today are still so poor, so hungry that they are forced to work in fields factories, mines, and homes in order to survive. This would not have been happening if they had a fair share of resources. It would not be happening if they had fair share of the policies and social protection in place for other children. It would not be happening if we paid attention to their lives and the injustices they face every day. The unequal global response to the pandemic has seen those who need the most help get the least and now unicef and the ilo have warned that child labor is anticipated to increase despite 2021 being the international year for the elimination of child labor we must not only prevent this potential reversal in progress but make the breakthrough needed to meet the 2025 deadline to end all forms of child labor. Heads of state across the world must fulfill their promise of eradication of child labor, without which the global sustainability agenda will be no more than I wash. If the most marginalized children had a fair share of budgets, policies and social protection, 
then we would eliminate child labor once and for all. As part of the fair share to end child labor this year, all of us must commit to ending child labor and ensuring every child has their fair share. I thank you. God bless you all. Albert Camus said, perhaps this will always be a world in which children suffer, but we can reduce the number of suffering children. Today is about working together so we can end the suffering of children. COVID-19 and the economic aftershocks have already resulted in the first rise in child labor, trafficking, and slavery in decades. We cannot have this happen during the United Nations International Year for the Elimination of Child Labor. 152 million children are forced to work rather than go to school. That is more than all the children in the United States and Canada combined. These children suffer from malnutrition and have the least access to health care, clean water, and sanitation. We cannot achieve racial and economic justice, whether in the United States or globally, without protecting every child. The good news is the solution is, is within our reach. Through the leadership of Kailash Satyarthi, the ILO, and so many of the people gathered here today, over the past 20 years, the number of children caught in the hell of child labor has plummeted from 246 million in 2000 to 152 million in the beginning of 2019. We have a lot to celebrate and a lot of lessons learned about what works. We have learned that no one can do this alone. We must combine forces of international organizations, governments, NGOs, and the private sector. Today, 75 of the world's 100 largest economies are actually multinational corporations, giving them a special role in ending supply chains which abuse children. Governments must protect the rights of all their citizens and assure access to education is a free, available, proximate, and of decent quality. We, the people, must be steadfast in our resolve and use our voice to globalize compassion and create a just and peaceful world. As President Biden and Vice President Harris take office, the resurrection of the fundamental values of America must include the revitalization of the principles of equality and justice for those most in need. We demand a fair share for all children and an end to child labor, a fair share in financial resources, policies, and social protection. Let's take up the challenge of Hillel. If not you, who? If not now, when? The Fair Share to End Child Labor campaign is our collective opportunity to treat every child with the care and opportunity they deserve. Let's sign the pledge and get to work. Thank you. Well, it's just fantastic to hear those messages and that that power of, of coming together is exactly what we need if we're to see the, the breakthrough. On, on our own, it's going to be difficult to change, but if we can bring together the faith sector, the business sector, the Nobel laureates with the youth activists, the multilateral organizations, the trade union movement, and the power of survivors, then this campaign is going to build a momentum and achieve a change and, and a massive breakthrough in that fight to end child labor this year. And appropriately enough, we're delighted to invite as our closing speaker, the incredible uh, Manan Asari. Manan is a, a former child laborer who worked in mica mines in India and is now a tireless advocate fighting for every child to have their rights to be a child. The embodiment of the power of change. Manan, the final word is yours.
I think the connection has just dropped at the, the wrong time. Well, I'm terribly sorry, but my man was being waiting patiently and the internet just dropped at the, <laughs> the right moment he was going to join. And I, we're going to, to, to wait just for a minute to see if we can get him back in. And we're going to play uh, just to remind everybody uh, about the campaign and the core messages behind the campaign. We'll play the campaign film while we wait for an internet to read. मैं पहले अबरक चुनती डर लगता था कि कहीं माटी ना गिर जाए और मेरे और ब्लड भी निकलते थे बहुत सारे और बहुत सारी परेशानियां का सामना करना पड़ता था और मेरी मांग यह है कि सरकार द्वारा जो भी बजट आए चाहे वो पंतर पर उसमें कुछ कुछ हिस्सा हम बच्चों को भी दिया जाए यह हमारा अधिकार है और हमें हम बच्चों की मांग को सुना जाए और हमारी अधिकार दिया जाए Well, it's such a, a powerful cause, and it, we're so delighted so many people were able to join us today. Um, Manan is, is trying to reconnect, so we're going to just wait for a minute, and I'm going to share just a couple more bits of information about this campaign, as well as seeing such a huge, broad constituency come together in just a few weeks for this launch. We're going to be seeing activity all over the world in the coming weeks and months, and there's going to be support for action at the national parliament level with uh, all national parliaments in the world encouraged to mark this UN year for child labor with a special session on child labor and we're working to see if we can have a, a, a connection the faith community are planning to announce in March a major interfaith initiative and we've seen already some tremendous work by the student and youth constituency who are planning a, a really amazing united campaign to bring together and to see young people around the world standing together for their brothers and sisters to achieve that change. Now, I, I think uh, Manan is is connecting. I, I will try one more time, um, but if the reception drops again, we will have to to finish because I know that we're, we're over time. Okay, unfortunately, I think we're going to have to leave it now. What we are going to do is we will share Manan's testimony on the website, the campaign website, which is uh, fairsharecampaign.org. And you will find there not just uh, Manan's testimony, but the testimony of, of survivors uh, from across the world. Because one of the big challenges that the campaign is trying to address is giving that visibility. One in 10 children, 10% 10 of children in the world are making goods and make growing crops for other children, for other adults. And what we uh, need to see is a greater visibility. They are making the touch screens by which we watch our programs. 
but out of the 5 billion videos watched a day on YouTube and others, how many of them are made by the 10% of children who are trapped in child labor? If we look at the news programs and the huge increase in communications, unfortunately, people aren't able to be friends on social media when they're as marginalized. And unfortunately, we've seen an increase in communications around the world, but actually the most marginalized children are more hidden than ever. So we will be, as a campaign, saying that uh, we will be bringing the survivor voice to the fore and at every one of the national parliament events, we'll be trying to share survivor testimony. And in the campaign, we're going to be connecting up and sharing survivor testimony with uh, others across the world, both in schools and campuses in faith communities across the world as a really important part of raising that public awareness. Well, I'm so um, sorry that we can't uh, hear Manan to close this event, but I would like to thank you all for joining us. And we're delighted uh, to have such support today at this historic moment. And we look forward to working with you all in the months uh, and years ahead. Thank you all.